Hello, dear viewers, you are watching Obi and Horn of Africa. This is Talk to Obi and Show. I am Adi Sasafa, hosting and producing this show for you. Uh, today, we're going to discuss about African affairs, and our talk going to revolve around African affairs and African-related issues. I joined by a communication strategist from Kenya via Zoom. His name is Mark Bachachi. Okay, sir, good to have you here. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. All right. Today we're going to discuss about African affairs, African-related issues. And let me begin with uh, how do you compare and contrast a continent Africa with, with the rest of other continents? Well, the, the, the comparison is, 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 is um, quite easy. So if you look at countries um, in the West, these are countries that have benefited from generations uh, past of either using colonialism or uh, taking resources out of places like India and Africa to enrich themselves. And I argue constantly that uh, Britain, uh, the United States, cannot claim to be wealthy countries without first facing the reality that their wealth comes from generations of plunder, which is why I support uh, the, quest, the, the, the quest for reparations in the United States of America because um, the black community there and of course Africa have also been unfairly disparaged when it comes to wealth. Africa, on the other hand, for the last 400 uh, plus years of our existence, has been a, 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 a continent where uh, many from the West and indeed even in Arabia have come to take advantage of our people, uh, use them as slaves and actually capture African resources and not pay us what is requisite for what they have taken. So the comparison is Africa has uh, generational uh, wealth uh, gaps and it also has generations of disruption because our people were taken away, our cultures were taken away and our institutions of governance were also taken away. And we know that without institutions of governance that have tested uh, the test of time, uh, just like the ones in Europe have, then we cannot claim uh, that Africa is in the same uh, setting and, and, and footing as much of the West. All right. Why Africa failed to have a common virtue amongst each nation across the continent of Africa? Okay, so the biggest issue we have eh, is that Africa has been consistently for generations being, being divided. So what happens is this. If you take 400 years of Africans plundering Africa, 400 years of Africans being forced to be sold into slavery, 400 years of every time an African uh, started uh, to, to, to build an empire, to build uh, something, it was fought by the West. So Africa finds itself with a history of division, history of plunder, and history of using natural resources without regard to tomorrow. So this history is the reason why Africa finds it hard to unite, finds it hard to have a commonality of purpose, because we are too used to being raided. raided. Okay, can we say Africa is fully independent from colonialism these days? Because we are seeing here and there uh, kind of psychological and uh, mental uh, uh, colony, like copy paste of Westerners is here and there. Like they use their media as a big tool to colonize Africa. Can we say that Africa yes. is independent from colony now? Let us look at, at, at what neocolonialism means. And, and let's start by looking at French uh, speaking Africa, much of French speaking Africa, their currency is still controlled from France. Uh, we know that in the last uh, 50 or so years of Africa's existence, uh, the West, the United States included, has meddled in African politics, sometimes deposing of uh, duly democratically elected leaders. Uh, PLO Lumumba is, is a good example. You've got, you've got uh, uh, 
you've got uh, Sankara in West Africa, in Burkina Faso. So we've seen the West literally meddle in, in, in African affairs to ensure that their politics is favorable to them. Uh, let us look that English-speaking Africa, English-speaking Africa was mostly controlled by institutions such as the IMF, which did not allow us to do what uh, the Chinese, uh, the Koreans did in developing their countries. And that is what? Managing their, their currencies and ensuring that their currencies were favorable to the export market. Here in Africa, we are forced to continue keeping to the IMF rules and yet, the stronger currencies do mean less exports uh, for us. So there's a lot that 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 goes to show that Africa is still colonized. Uh, if you look at the media, as you alluded to, uh, the media is westward uh, leaning. How many times uh, do we hear the media say that 50 people died, including 10 Americans, as though the other 40 <laughs> are not as people as Americans? So we we have this mental, economic, and 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 social. Uh, colonization that continues to happen. Uh, the, the sad thing is that our leaders are indeed focused on the brick and mortar development of our countries, but we are not focusing really on the social and cultural development of our people. Okay, uh, Professor Pielo Lumumba is an advocate of African unity and he's eloquent public speaker of African continent. And he usually utters saying, why Africa lacks this all staff? The issue is this, that for as long as our identity is, is we, we consider our identity inferior, we will continue to, to, to borrow from others, hoping that the best practices of others will work for us. Uh, listen, if for as long as an African uh, cannot write made in Africa on, 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 on something and feel proud for it, but instead be proud to buy a made in Germany car, a made in Italy time, a made in this and that place uh, thing, then he will always, always consider himself, his culture and what he's doing inferior uh, to, 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 to the West. And it is this inferiority complex that leads us uh, not to one deal with deal with uh, uh, our education sector and make it more African centric. So we want to borrow from the West. It is the same reason we will not manufacture and buy within Africa. Intra Africa trade is is less because we do not believe we have quality. And this continues into and cascades into everything. Whether it is research, it is it is it is governance. And, and, and what we fail to understand is that every nation that has developed, every nation that has succeeded, has decided its own path. The Chinese chose their own path, and part of choosing their own path was to decide that they will not respect uh, the intellectual property of the many of companies that went to China, which is why, you know, phones went to China, and then Chinese phones came up. But, but in Africa, we, we, we decided to play by the rules of those who do not have the best interest of Africa at heart. And it is by playing by those rules that Africa has found itself where it is. Uh, how long would uh, this uh, Westerners interference work in Africa? Because Asians uh, have done their own strategy to halt uh, Western interference, especially the tiger group, Singapore, China, Korea, the Northern South, and Taiwan, and you, you know, you, you name it, right? They wouldn't allow, yeah. w they wouldn't allow the interference of uh, America and other Western countries. But Westerners in Africa are doing everything they could do. They assign a puppet government, they interfere in your policies and every staff, right? How yes. should we halt this? 
Well, the, 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 the first solution you've already spoken about, and that is the unification of Africa. It does not necessarily need, need to be a political unification, but we need to do at least a policy unification so that we have an all of Africa approach towards dealing with the worldwide issues. That is number one, because one of the mistakes we do is we forget that divided we fall and united we stand. So we need to at least be united when we are facing the rest of the world. The second issue that needs to happen is we need to stop the dependency on, on foreign aid to build Africa. And, and this is something that, that has become sort of like an addiction for Africa, where uh, much of our money is borrowed from the West, much of our fiscal policy is borrowed from the West, and we are highly dependent on the West to, to move forward. Instead, what Africa needs to do is begin to depend on itself, to see if the resources it has, and to be able to stand by itself without, without dependence on the West, because the reason the West is able to dictate to us what should happen is simply because we are addicted uh, to foreign aid, uh, foreign loans and things like that. African countries need to unite and see what resources and not only resources but also uh, human capital can be used to develop Africa and, and what kind of sacrifices African countries can make towards each other to ensure that there's economic stability. Once that uh, happens, we will be able to say no to, to the West. And that's what uh, the Asian Tigers, as you correctly put it, have been able to do. And not only the uh, Asian Tigers, look at the Arabian League. The Arabian League has, has, has um, succeeded in basically ensuring that their part of the world lives up to what they want and envision for for their people and 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 you can see that in states like qatar the united arab Emirates, saudi arabia and countries like this uh, because they've stood their ground and chosen what is best for their people first um nigeria is is a sad example because nigeria has just about as much oil as this these countries, but uh, because of the concessions on how uh, they've allowed the oil to be taken out of the country, they are not seeing the benefits of that oil. And, and this is really the crux of the problem. Okay, uh, Africa is endowed with both natural and uh, historical resources, but the continent is characterized by hunger, illiteracy, unemployment, uh, immigration, you see, uh, all bad stuff goes to Africa. Like those, mm. those threats goes to Africa's uh, character, right? Yes. How far would this trend go? And what has to be done to change this status quo? So, so first and foremost, we, 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 must, we, must, we must start the... the, the the journey towards restoring African pride and African uh, 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 identity. That is number one. Because if we respect ourselves, we will not be the dumping ground of, of used electronics uh, from across the world. If we respect ourselves, we will not be the dumping ground of used clothes. We don't want to manage the public uh, image of Africa. So that's the other thing that must happen, that we must take control of the image and the story that is told about, about Africa. When you look at uh, stories done uh, about Chicago in the United States, you will not see them showing the dirty streets they will show the shining gleaming uh, towers in the city of chicago uh, the americans have uh, more uh, 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 gun violence than africa and 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 than even syria which is at war but the americans will still show us the best of america so we, we need to begin to manage our public image but our government also need to begin to be pushed uh, to, 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 to stake our claims more vigorously on the international stage. Uh, we need to, 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 to say that African, uh, for example, the history of what has happened to Africa needs to be needs to be revisited, and the countries that took slaves from Africa need need to pay reparations to Africa, and that is part of demanding your dignity. That you demand that you are treated right, and you de demand that you 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 are taken care of uh, uh, based on your dignity. Uh, and if someone does an indignity to you, you ask them uh, to pay you. Um, the other thing is to is to 
ignore the international rules that don't uh, favor Africa. For example, the uh, intellectual property right now around the COVID vaccine. I think African countries should step up, uh, use those IPs to save our people, because you look at the West, they've got upwards of 50% of their populations immunized. And now with the Delta variant, Africa is, is between one and 4% of our populations immunized. So we are putting our people in danger while respecting the rules of people who have become wealthy by abusing us. So this, this is really what must happen. Uh, Africa must take a tough stance. Okay, good. Why Westerners always stand against uh, Pan-African movement and why they really hate this agenda? Well, it is, it is simple, sir, really. If you look at the population of Africans, 1.4 billion Africans on the continent, uh, close to 60% of them young and educated and energetic, we know that the reason why Africans were taken to slavery is because we were literally the only race that was strong enough to survive the journey and the work that was on the other side. So they know that whether you look at it in terms of population, energy, education, Education, Africa is definitely uh, set to take up the, the global stage. So they understand that the only way to keep Africa down is to keep her divided. Again, if Africa is united, you can imagine uh, the, 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 the gold and silver and platinum wealth being protected by a huge institution uh, called Africa. You can imagine the population, the, the, the amount of, of work that is able to be put out there. Because one of the things that, 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 that the Westerners did was to make sure that they gave us countries that were too small to succeed by themselves. If you look at countries like Rwanda and Burundi, they're too small. Look at a country like Lesotho. They're too small uh, to, 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 to succeed unless they go uh, the root of, of many small European countries, which becomes uh, uh, hiding places for ill-gotten wealth, including wealth from Africa. So they, they know that the division of Africa, as it was done, was, uh, was intended not only to divide Africans, but to make sure that our states were too small to succeed. Our armies are too small. If you look at uh, the Kenyan or indeed the Ethiopian army, we've got, what, one million, two million soldiers. So we can't really mount uh, a, 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 a real um, challenge uh, to the European and American military might. Uh, yet you look at them, look at countries like Canada, look at all these other spaces, look at the geographical space that they occupy. So we need to understand that the, it is for fear of a united Africa that we are kept uh, divided. Great. Okay, what do you urge for Westerners not to interfere in African uh, politics? You see, we, we, we can't... For instance, sorry for, sorry for the interruption. These days we are seeing uh, very bad uh, interference of um, United States in Ethiopian politics. I, I know uh, you, you have heard about it, right? What has to yes, be yes. done to halt such interference? Well, first and foremost, what, what must happen is our leaders must take um, a firm stance and, and say no to, to that interference. That is number one. Number two, the African Union actually needs to grow some teeth. And uh, those teeth, what they're supposed to do very clearly is to tell the West that no, we will stand by uh, Ethiopia's right to self-determination, to self-rule, and we will allow Ethiopia to go through its processes to come up to with solutions for, for, for itself. And, and once it's come up with solutions for itself, then we as Africans and you as the West are also welcome to, to, to support the solution that uh, Ethiopia has uh, come up with. That is the only way. So unless we stand firm, they will continue to, to, to manipulate and to move in in the pretense of trying to strengthen our democracies. But really what they want is access to African resources at the lowest cost. Great. Okay, you've said the uh, African Union has to grow some teeth. I like yes. it. I like it. And some people criticize that African Union is a lab dog and others 
appreciated as uh, a watchdog, right? Where is your stand? Yes. Is African Union a watchdog or a lab dog for you? <laughs> for a well, content, for the, I mean, for for keeping Africa's interest. Because well, I do have, I have a reason. Because UN for United States of America and uh, the organization called uh, UN is striving to maintain America's interest, wherever it is. Yes. And uh, yes. European Union is striving to maintain and uh, uh, achieve Europeans' interest and uh, the Arab League, America's interest in some Arab countries. But African Union is, I mean, it's questionable anyway. Well, let's start here. Um, and I've said this a number of times, that it does not make sense to me why the countries that went to the World War are the ones that have veto power at the UN. And, and, and there I agree with you, because uh, you, you cannot be the causes of war and then be the reason why uh, the final deciders of peace and stability ac across the world. But here's the problem. Um, here's an, an, an <laughs> the biggest problem is here. Let us look at 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 um, at the funding of of the AU. Okay. The member states are supposed to fund the AU. The question is, are they finding the AU to the requisite amounts? Because for as long as we are not funding the AU uh, 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 consistently, then even the member countries will not believe that it is something that they can, they can use uh, to, to, to push their agenda. So number one, we must put our money where our mouth is and increase the funding for the African Union and actually begin to lean for, on the African Union to do a lot more of the, of the uh, negotiations on behalf of, of Africa. This is something that needs to be pushed very hard. Secondly, the African Union's mandate, which is very clear, needs to move faster and faster towards uh, conformity to those uh, 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 goals that the African Union has within the member states. So th there needs to be, um, and, and, and NEPAD was supposed to do this, uh, but essentially we need to bring Africa to the same standard. So the same way the Europeans have done it, and I hate to use them as an example, that joining the African Union must mean something. You know, you, you can't join the African Union and refuse to develop your people. Join the African Union and refuse to, to do education to the right standard. Join the African Union and refuse uh, to have enough universities. So we need to have a standard. What does it mean to be a member of the African Union? You cannot be a member of the African Union and close your economy uh, to fellow Africans, which is why I love the, uh, the African Free Trade agreements so that's what needs to happen so we need to fund and then we need to make membership in the african union actually mean something and have value great what has to be done to have a very united africa well it, 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 it it's very simple it's it's managing the politics of our politicians uh, for as long as many countries consider each other enemies, you know, Tanzania considering Kenya an enemy, you know, and, 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 and Botswana, you know, and all these other countries thinking that we are in competition and xenophobia, which is brought about by politicians. For as long as those things exist, uh, it, it, can't, it, it can't work. So to unify Africa, we need the political goodwill, and we need the people of Africa to stop seeing each other in a xenophobic lens and instead see each other as, as brothers and sisters who have a shared good. Okay, let me get back to the question that I have asked you a while ago about the America's interference in Ethiopian politics these days. What do you know about it? And what is your well, notion? My notion is, is very clear, okay? We need to understand that the Horn of Africa is strategically important. 
It is strategically important because of the maritime border, uh, the, the, the different passages of, of, of um, cargo through the area. And we know, of course, uh, Djibouti already has attracted uh, huge military bases uh, from China and, and other superpowers. So we know that there's always been interest in, in the Horn of Africa. Now, if you want to affect the Horn of Africa, there are two big countries that you need to deal with. The number one is uh, Kenya, number, number two is Ethiopia or vice versa. And, and therefore, uh, controlling and influencing the politics of these two countries is, is a big step in ensuring that you control uh, the region at large. And that's, that's, that's really my take on the matter. Okay, the administration on the table, which is headed by the Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, has got a pan-African move in, uh, in uh, unifying uh, the country Ethiopia as well as the continent Africa. But uh, the Americans turned uh, blind eyes and deaf ears to him. And uh, what is your reflection again on this? Well, you see, the thing is that, and, and we need to be very, very clear, okay, that uh, the prime minister of, of Ethiopia finds himself in a, in a period, in a very tumultuous time, both locally, uh, what's happening with the, with the um, uh, 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 violence and battles that are going on there. Then, of course, in trying to change relations between Eritrea and Djibouti and Ethiopia, then you've got Somalia, on the other side, which is which um, Ethiopian troops are still there trying to maintain uh, the peace. At the same time, you've got to consider that there are vast, vast interests, as I've said before, in Ethiopia and its political future. So the prime minister is a prime minister who's uh, basically uh, steering a ship that is in transition, uh, both in a pan-African sense, but also uh, locally. So the truth of the matter then is that not only Ethiopians, but Africa as a whole, must continue to wish and push for Ethiopia to have stability. And, 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 and I forgot to even mention that the dam that is being built uh, in Ethiopia that is almost, uh, I'm not sure whether it's been commissioned or not, but that dam is also causing tension uh, between uh, Sudan, North Sudan, and 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 and, and, and um, Egypt. So all of these issues come to bear, and Prime Minister Abe has to balance these issues. And what is the responsibility of the rest of Africa to stand with Ethiopia? That number one, it finds solutions for its local problems as a country, and number two, to push to, towards a united front in not only standing with Ethiopia but with standing with Africa for Africans. Appreciate it. Okay. Mark Bachachi, uh, communication strategist from Kenya. Thank you for your precious time and thank you for making time to give us this valuable interview. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. Take care. Bye. All right. Take care. Bye. Dear viewers, thank you for being with us uh, so far. Thank you very much for your precious time. Bye-bye. Have a good one.